A hand axe is a prehistoric stone tool with two faces that is the longest used tool in human history. It is usually composed of flint or chert. It is characteristic of the Lower Aculean and Middle Paleolithic periods. Its technical name comes from the fact that the archetypical model is a generally bifacial lithic flake with an almond-shaped morphology. Hand axes tend to be symmetrical along their longitudinal axis and formed by pressure or percussion. The most common hand axes have a pointed end and rounded base, which gives them their characteristic shape, and both faces have been napped to remove the natural cortex, at least partially. Hand axes are a type of the somewhat wider biface group of two-faced tools or weapons. Hand axes were the first prehistoric tools to be recognized as such. The first published representation of a hand axe was drawn by John Frere and appeared in a British publication in 1800. Up until that time their origins were thought to be natural or supernatural. Hand axe tools were possibly used in five ways. 1. Butchering hunted or scavenged animals. 2. Digging for tubers, animals, water. 3. Chopping wood and removing tree bark. 4. Throwing at prey. 5. As a source for flake tools. Terminology. Some researchers have defined four classes of hand axe. Class 1 consists of large, thick hand axes reduced from causal thick flakes. These are referred to as blanks. Class 2 consists of thinned blanks. While form remains rough and uncertain, an effort has been made to reduce the thickness of the flake or core. Class 3 hand axe may be either preforms or crude formalized tools, such as adzes. Class 4 includes the finer formalized tool types such as projectile points and fine bifaces. While class 4 hand axes are referred to as formalized tools, bifaces from any stage of a lithic reduction sequence may be used as tools. The word biface was used for the first time in 1920 by the French antiquarian André Vaison de Pradena. This term coexists with the more popular hand axe, which was coined by Louis Laurent Gabriel de Mortil at much earlier. The continued use of the word by face by Francois Borders and Lionel Ballout and their scientific authority has maintained the use of the word by face in France and Spain where it has replaced the term hand axe. Use of the expression hand axe has continued in English as the equivalent of the French by face. While by face is used more generally for any piece that has been carved on both sides by the removal of shallow or deep flakes. The expression Faustkale is used in German that can be literally translated as hand axe, although in a stricter sense it means fist wedge. It is the same in Dutch where the expression used is vuistbeel, which literally means fist axe, and the same occurs in other languages. However, the general impression of these tools has been too rigid as the first definitions of hand axes were based on ideal pieces that were of such perfect shape that they caught the attention of non-experts. Over time, a deepening knowledge of their typology has resulted in a broadening of the term's meaning. So there is now a distinction between a biface hand axe and a bifacial lithic item. In fact, according to today's definitions a hand axe is not always a bifacial item and there are many bifacial items that are not hand axes at all. Hand axes and bifacial items are not exclusive to the lower Paleolithic period in the Old World. They appear throughout the world and in many different prehistorical epochs, without necessarily implying an ancient origin. In fact, lithic typology has long ceased to be a reliable chronological reference and it has been abandoned as a dating system. Examples of this include the quasi-bifaces, that sometimes appear in strata from the Gravitian, Solutrean and Magdalenian periods in France and Spain the crude bifacial pieces of the Lupomban culture or the piriform tools found near Sagua La Grande in Cuba. It appears that the findings at Sagua La Grande have been misinterpreted perhaps from a misunderstanding of the concept or due to contamination of the Spanish language by English. As explained above, the word biface refers to something different in English than biface in French or bifas in Spanish which could lead to many misunderstandings.
by facially carved cutting tools, very similar to hand axes, were used to clear scrub vegetation throughout the Neolithic and Chalcolithic periods. These tools are similar to more modern adzes and were a cheaper alternative to polished axes. The modern-day villages along the Sepik River in New Guinea continue to use tools that are virtually identical to hand axes to clear parts of the forest. In the opinion of Professor Luis Benito del Rey of the University of Salamanca, the term biface should be reserved for items from before the WURME 3 interstadial, although he also admits that certain later objects could exceptionally be called bifaces. Hand axe should also not be identified with axe, which has unfortunately been somewhat overused in lithic typology to describe a wide variety of stone tools, particularly at a time when the true use of the items being described was not understood. In the particular case of Paleolithic hand axes, the term axe is an inadequate description. Lionel Ballout has stated, the term should be rejected as a erroneous interpretation of these objects that are not axes. Subsequent studies have supported this idea, above all those examining the signs of use, as will be seen below. Raw materials. Hand axes are mainly made of flint, but rhyolites, phonolites, quartzites and other rather coarse rocks were used as well. Obsidian, natural volcanic glass, shatters easily and was rarely used. Use. As most hand axes have a sharp border all around, there is no firm agreement about their use. The pioneers of the study of Paleolithic tools first suggested that bifaces were used as axes or at least for use in hard physical activities. The idea soon arose that the hand axe was a multifunctional tool and not only this. In addition it was realized that the different forms and shapes of the many known examples make them in effect what is colloquially known as the Aquilian Swiss Army Knife. Each type of tool could have been used for a number of different tasks. H.G. Wells proposed in 1899 that hand axes were used as missile weapons to hunt prey, an interpretation supported by Professor William H. Calvin of University of Washington, in Seattle who has suggested that some of the rounder examples of Aculean hand axes were used as hunting projectiles or as killer frisbees, meant to be thrown at a herd of animals at a water hole so as to stun one of them. This assertion was inspired by findings from the Oligoseli archaeological site in modern Kenya. There are few indications of hand axe hafting, and some artifacts are far too large for that. However a thrown hand axe would not usually have penetrated deeply enough to cause very serious injuries. Additionally many hand axes are very small, there is very little evidence of impact damage in most hand axes. In addition, as hand axes can be recycled, resharpened and even remade throughout their lives, they could have been used for many different tasks during their working life. For this reason it is misleading to think of them simply as axes, they could have been used for digging, cutting, scraping, chopping, piercing hammering etc. In addition, and given their mass, they may also be used as a lithic core to obtain flakes that could be used as knives or transformed for specialized uses through retouching. Tony Baker suggested that the hand axe was not a tool, but a core from which flakes had been removed and used as tools. However, hand axes are often found with retouching such as sharpening or shaping, casting doubt on this idea. Other theories suggest the shape is part tradition and partly a byproduct of the way it is manufactured. Since many early hand axes appear to be made from simple rounded pebbles, it is necessary to detach a starting flake often much larger than the rest of the flakes, thus creating an asymmetry in the hand axe. When the asymmetry is corrected by removing extra material from the other faces, a trend toward a more pointed form factor is achieved. Studies in the 1990s at Boxgrove, in which a butcher attempted to cut up a carcass with a hand axe, revealed that the hand axe was perfect for getting at bone marrow. Marek Cohn and Stephen Mithen have independently arrived at the explanation that symmetric hand axes have been favored by sexual selection as fitness indicators. 
Cohn in his book As We Know It wrote that the hand axe is a highly visible indicator of fitness, and so becomes a criterion of made choice. Evolutionary psychologist Jeffrey Miller follows on their example and has said that hand axes have characteristics which make them suitable for being subject to sexual selection forces such as that they were made for over a million years throughout Africa, Europe and Asia, they were made in large numbers, and most were impractical for utilitarian use. He says that a single design persisting across such a span of time and space cannot be explained by cultural imitation and draws a parallel between bowerbirds, bowers and Pleistocene hominids hand axes. He calls hand axe building a genetically inherited propensity to construct a certain type of object. He discards the idea that they were used as missile weapons as there were more efficient weapons at the time, such as javelins, and although he accepts that some hand axes may have been used for practical reasons, he agrees with Cohn and Mithen who have shown that many hand axes show a considerable degree of skill design and symmetry beyond the demands for utility. Some were too big or too small. They feature symmetry far beyond practical use and show evidence for excessive attention to form and finish. Miller thinks that the most important clue is that most hand axes show no signs of use or evidence of edgeware under electron microscopes. Furthermore, hand axes can be good handicaps in Amot Zahavai's handicap principle theory. The learning costs are high, there are risks of injury, they require physical strength, hand-eye coordination, planning, patience, pain tolerance, and resistance to infection from cuts and bruises when making or using such a hand axe. Evidence from wear analysis microwear analysis the use where analysis of Paleolithic hand axes has been carried out on findings from emblematic sites across nearly all of Western Europe. Keeley and Semenov were the pioneers of this specialized investigation. Lawrence H. Keeley has stated, The morphology of typical hand axes suggests a greater range of potential activities than those of flakes. However, there are a number of problems that need to be overcome in carrying out this type of analysis. The first resides in the difficulty in observing the larger pieces using a microscope. This has meant that despite the millions of known pieces, very few have been thoroughly studied. The second big question arises from the clear evidence that the same tasks were performed more effectively using utensils made from flakes. This raises the question, why make hand axes, whose production is more complicated and costly, if the flakes can do the same work with the same efficiency? The answer could be that, in general, hand axes were not conceived for a particular function. They were not made for one main task but covered a much more general purpose. Keeley, op. CIT, page 136. Keeley, basing his observations on various archaeological sites in England, has proposed that in base settlements where it was possible to predict future actions and where there was a greater control on routine activities, the preferred tools were raclawas, backed knives, scrapers, punchers, etc. However, hand axes were more suitable on expeditions and in seasonal camps where it was more likely that unforeseen tasks would need to be carried out. Their main advantage in these situations was their all-round nature, lack of specialization and adaptability to all eventualities. A hand axe has a long blade with different curves and angles, some will be sharper and others more resistant, it will also have points, notches etc. All of this combined in one piece and, given the right circumstances, it is possible to make use of loose flakes. In the same book Keeley states that a number of the hand axes studied were used as knives to cut meat. He has also identified that the point of another hand axe has been used as a drill that was turned clockwise. This hand axe came from the famous archaeological site at Clacton-on-Sea. 
The American Nicholas Toth reached similar conclusions for pieces from the Spanish archaeological site in Ambrona. Analysis carried out by the Spaniard Manuel Dominguez Rodrigo and co-workers on the primitive Aculian site in Peninge on a series of tools dated as 1.5 meters years old shows clear microware produced by plant phytoliths suggesting that the hand axes were used to work wood. Macroscopic traces of use Microscopes are not the only tools that provide clues to a hand axe's use. Some were used with such force that marks were left that are clearly visible. Other visible marks can be left as the scars left by retouching. On occasions it is possible to distinguish them from marks left by the initial manufacturer. One of the most common cases is when a point breaks. This has been seen by various researchers on sites in Europe, Africa and Asia. One example comes from the El Basilito site in Salamanca, where excavation uncovered fragments of a hand axe with marks at the tip that appeared to be the result of the action of a wedge, which would have subjected the object to high levels of torsion that resulted in the tip being broken. A break or extreme wear will not only affect a tool's point, it could affect any part of a hand axe. However, this type of wear was reworked by means of a secondary working as discussed above. In some cases this reconstruction is easily identifiable and was carried out using techniques such as the coup de tranchette or simply with scale or scalar reform retouches that alter an edge's symmetry and line. Variation in form The most characteristic and common shape that a hand axe has is a pointed area at one end, cutting edges along its side and a rounded base. However, a hand axe is an instrument with a variety of shapes, including circular, triangular, and elliptical. They can be between 8 and 15 centimeters in length, although they can also be bigger or smaller. They were typically made from a rounded stone, a block or lithic flake using a hammer to remove flakes from both sides of the item. This hammer can be hard or more delicate results can be obtained using a soft version made of wood or antler. However, there are a number of differences relating to a hand axe's technological aspect. For example, uniface tools have only been worked on one side and partial bifaces retain a high proportion of the natural cortex of the tool stone, often making it easy to confuse them with chopping tools. Further, simple bifaces may have been created from a suitable tool stone but they rarely show evidence of retouching. In summary, despite the recognition of hand axes by many typological schools and under different archaeological paradigms, and despite being easily recognizable, it is almost impossible to easily define them as a distinct set or subset. Stated more formally, the idealized model combines a series of well-defined properties, but none of these properties are necessary or sufficient to characterize any item as a hand axe. Only some of these attributes are necessary for a positive identification, although an object may lack others. The study of hand axes is made complicated because its shape is the result of a complicated chain of technical actions that are only occasionally revealed in their later stages. If this complexity of intentions during the manufacture of a hand axe is added to its variety of forms, we realize that the hand axe is one of the most problematical and complex objects in prehistory. Benito del Rey, op. CIT, 1982, pages 314 and 315.